This is a, um, a seminar that's co-hosted by ITE. Is there anybody from ITE that wishes to say hello or something? Okay, come on down. Hi, I'm uh, James. I'm a vice president of ITE, and uh, I just wanted to say we're so glad to be uh, co-sponsoring uh, this uh, really interesting seminar on creative transportation modeling. And it's really interesting to see uh, kind of intersection of data analytics and transportation. And I hope you guys all enjoy this, uh, enjoy this seminar and uh, also check the Metrans website and um, the Metrans newsletter. And we usually um, will put the events and seminars that uh, ITE is hosting along with Metrans uh, in that. So definitely check us out. And we're actually hosting an event later today that's virtual. If it's about, um, it's more about uh, like the public sector. So if you're interested in joining that, definitely feel free to join. But yeah, thank you guys for all coming to this event and I hope you enjoy this presentation. And I'll pass back to Professor Giuliano now. Thank you, thank you. Dr. Nochera, he is a computer scientist. He's the Associate Director of IMSC, which is the Integrated Media Systems Center. Uh, this is a group that uh, we have worked with now for quite some years. Um, and it's been a great partnership because we've been able to do so many things that takes advantage of the skills of computer science and allows us to do applications in transportation analysis and planning that we would never have been able to do otherwise. So with that, we're going to hear today about a project. This is the beginning of a project uh, that is aimed at trying to figure out how many trucks are out there and where are they going? I uh, believe it or not, no metropolitan area has any idea of which trucks are going where, what they're carrying, um, or um, anything about really about, about them at all. So we're trying to use sophisticated, wonderful computer science, data analytics types of methods uh, to sort of do an end run by uh, figuring out how we can do, use the data more, more efficiently to actually get some idea of freight flows on the network. So that's my intro, and thank you, Luciano, for coming. Thank you, Professor Juliano, for the introduction. So I'll get started uh, with the presentation. So uh, this is about research that we've done uh, in the past year. Uh, about uh, freight uh, and trying to understand, uh, as Professor Giuliano uh, told us, uh, where the, the trucks are coming from, where they're going, uh, what is their pattern during the day, uh, and uh, the methods that we're uh, applying have to do with, with things that we have done uh, in the past, as you will see. Uh, at the uh, center that is the Integrated Media System Center. And I'll try to, uh, during the presentation, to point to that so that uh, you see the connection. Uh, uh, I just want to mention before I get uh, started with the slides that uh, Chris uh, Anastasio uh, is the PhD student who did, uh, 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 who led the development uh, for, for, the, for the project. Uh, and he might join us uh, a little bit later. At the 30, so if you have questions uh, for him, he, I'm sure he will uh, like to, to fill them. So a little bit of background first. Uh, so why do uh, we need uh, data uh, about, about trucks? Uh, so freight in general uh, uh, it consists of large trucks. So, so they impact the infrastructure uh, that has obviously uh, Ramification in terms of uh, uh, the need to maintain the roadways. Uh, now there is new technology that is coming in with uh, electric uh, uh, vehicles, uh, and uh, therefore, uh, uh, hopefully soon, uh, trucks will move to uh, the an electric power power train. And then there are questions about where are you going to place uh, charging stations uh, and so on. So those applications have to do uh, more with planning. Uh, in terms of uh, traffic, uh, obviously trucks tend to slow down uh, the roadways, uh, and uh, there, there, there might be relations with uh, the number of accidents uh, that happen. Uh, and all of that, obviously, uh, tra traffic has a huge economic impact that uh, uh, you, you want to factor in, uh, especially in a metropolitan area such as the one we're in. 
Uh, and finally, but not uh, the least one, is uh, is else, uh, especially with uh, the, the uh, air quality uh, uh, problems that uh, trucks tend to uh, generate. And uh, that impacts uh, obviously adversely the uh, communities that live around the corridors where these uh, trucks uh, move about. Uh, so the, the current uh, uh, the situation is that we don't have much information in terms of where the trucks are coming and where they're going. Uh, so this is uh, typically captured into what is called an OD matrix, that is an origin destination matrix. So it's just a table that tells you uh, for a given origin and a given destination, uh, the number of trucks that are going on that uh, uh, path. Uh, so the, the current way of estimating this type of uh, information, this sort of matrix, is basically to look at uh, surveys. Uh, so you know that uh, the, the, there is cargo that are coming in at the ports, uh, and uh, you know where the warehouses are located and rail stations. And uh, you, you get surveys that uh, provide you with some numbers that you can try to uh, uh, used to estimate uh, between origin and destination, what is the count of trucks that are moving about. Uh, so obviously those, those surveys, they're not fine-grained, uh, both in terms of time and in terms of space. Uh, and uh, you, you might gather from the uh, problems that are uh, related to, to uh, the truck, uh, the freight traffic, uh, that uh, you, uh, for instance, the traffic that uh, in, in order to understand uh, how to solve them, you uh, need better uh, resolution, uh, especially temporal resolution. Traffic tends to change quite uh, dramatically, especially if you have accidents. Uh, uh, and the spatial resolution is also uh, important because usually the trucks tend to go to the same areas where the warehouses are located. Uh, and uh, uh, th that uh, has a huge impact on the communities that live uh, around uh, those uh, locations. Uh, so uh, obviously we're starting th this project uh, without much background uh, uh, data on trucks uh, because that there is none that is really uh, coming through aside from the surveys. Uh, and uh, we're, we're making some uh, we want to make some impacts, so, so we're making some simplifying assumptions. One of them is that uh, we're going to limit ourselves to a region uh, that uh, is uh, shown here that uh, includes the ports of Long Beach and, uh, and Los Angeles, where a lot of the truck-related uh, traffic originates. Uh, and uh, we're also going to uh, try to narrow down uh, where the origin and the destination are uh, located uh, and what is the path that the trucks take by limiting ourselves to the uh, highway system. Uh, now the choice uh, to do that is mostly driven uh, by the approach that we're using, that is that uh, we want to try to uh, not get track information from surveys, but rather trying to uh, get the information from uh, sensors that are telling us that uh, there is a truck that is going by at this location at this time, and it's uh, this type of, of uh, vehicle. Uh, so what vehicles, uh, what trucks, uh, vehicle types uh, are, are interesting to look at? Uh, so this is from the Federal Highway Administration uh, and it shows you a classification of the trucks uh, and other vehicles that uh, populate the roadways. Uh, and as you can see, a large there is a large variation of uh, types of uh, classes for the trucks that uh, you may want to be interested in uh, in uh, tracking. Uh, and that includes also smaller vehicles such as delivery van. So now the, we've seen a large increase uh, of those over the past years, uh, mainly driven by the fact that uh, people buy goods online and they need to be delivered and the delivery vans are doing uh, that work. Uh, so if we look at the what sensors uh, we have available for uh, uh, tracking the, the, this uh, these trucks. Uh, 
uh, in the region of, uh, of interest, we did a survey and we uh, basically find out two classes uh, of sensors. Uh, the first class is a class that is used uh, currently for getting track information. Uh, and that is very accurate, uh, meaning that you would be able to know uh, what type of truck uh, uh, is going by at uh, what time uh, with uh, uh, good accuracy. Uh, and that includes the WIM that are the, the waiting stations. Uh, I think that in the map they're, they're uh, shown with the little blue truck. Uh, the TAMS, that is a system from uh, UCI that, to, that uses uh, traffic detectors uh, and uh, uh, signal processing uh, and AI to uh, capture uh, the, the uh, exact type of, of, of uh, truck that is going by. Uh, and we have uh, there the count that is six. So you, you can see in this region is, is not that uh, much used. The reason for the TAMS being that uh, it's still a research uh, system. Uh, and then you have uh, RFIDs that uh, are used mainly at the ports. So all of those uh, are available uh, through uh, Caltrans that is uh, uh, able to access them. And they would provide vehicle counting. Uh, the, the second category are sensors that uh, are used uh, uh, by Caltrans for other purposes than counting trucks uh, that have been used for uh, uh, um, looking at the volume of vehicles uh, in general, uh, counting the number of cars, uh, for instance. And that includes the uh, CCTV cameras. So those are mounted close by to the highway and you'll see some, some examples of that uh, later on. Uh, and so those are, are uh, um, more present there in this region. We have 15 of them. Uh, however, they're not used uh, for, for, uh, for counting trucks because they don't have the software uh, that is present uh, that uh, would allow you to detect and classify uh, the, the, the vehicles as being trucks. Uh, there is also uh, the ILD that is a, a system uh, that the Caltrans has deployed uh, and uh, those we would need to uh, uh, talk to Caltrans to, to get access to. Uh, but my understanding is that it's, uh, it's, it's not that uh, uh, we, we don't have many of those. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I wanted to uh, mention the, the, the traffic sensors. Uh, so the, one of the things that we've been doing at uh, IMSC is uh, partner with uh, Metro to uh, collect data, uh, uh, traffic data on the roadways. Uh, so this is uh, possible because uh, all the roadways in California have uh, these uh, induction uh, loops uh, embedded in the pavement uh, that uh, basically uh, are able to detect uh, vehicles that are going by. And uh, they tell you what is the traffic on the roadways, uh, not just highway, but uh, also any roads, uh, even in the city in, in Los Angeles. Uh, so here the question is, uh, can, could we use that for uh, uh, the purpose of uh, uh, understanding what is the tra traffic and the problem is that uh, it, they, they're not good in terms of resolution uh, and uh, they're good for counting uh, number of vehicles, but they're not good enough uh, for telling you what type of vehicle is going by. Uh, however, as you will see, we, we use this information uh, because the, the traffic tells us uh, uh, we can use that information in modeling the, the truck volume. Uh, I'll tell you that uh, in a little bit. Uh, so the goal, I think, that uh, is clear now is to uh, basically uh, use the, the sensors uh, to estimate this uh, all the metrics uh, and also uh, because the sensors uh, are uh, on, on um, segments in the highway, uh, we would like to also estimate the, the volume uh, of freight on those segments. 
uh, and that allows for uh, a finer uh, spatial resolution uh, for, for the audio metrics. Uh, so the, the, the approach is to use the sensors uh, observations that uh, tell you when the trucks are going by uh, and uh, use them in a, an integrated fashion where you can basically uh, uh, derive the information about the volume, number of trucks that are going by any uh, road uh, segment. So some of the questions that uh, that we want to address are uh, how do you estimate this uh, audiometrics from sensor observations? Uh, how do uh, how accurate can you do that? Um, uh, and, and there there are questions that are relevant to planning. So if it turns out that uh, those sensors are are useful and you can get uh, uh, accurate enough uh, uh, estimations for the type of application that uh, uh, you're looking at, then how many sensor you would you need to deploy? Uh, what type of sensor? Uh, depending on the area, depending on on the, uh, the freight traffic that you have on on, on that area. Uh, and and uh, so so you, uh, the, the 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 last question is is uh, specific to one of the sensors that we want to leverage. That is the the one for which we have the most number in the region of interest uh, that, that we're studying. And that is the, CTC, the CCTV cameras. Uh, and we want to basically understand if uh, what, what is the, the quality of the, of the information that we can get from those sensors. Uh, and is it possible to automate uh, the system of um, of generating information from uh, CCTV cameras that, that we can use in the floor estimation. Uh, so, so to give you a little bit of uh, an intuition of the, the approach that we're using for uh, modeling uh, the, the flow of, of trucks, I'm going to start with something simple that is how things are done today with uh, uh, using survey information. Uh, so here it's a, it's a simplified view of, uh, of the problem where you have one origin and a couple of destinations. And uh, basically what the surveys are providing you is for a number of uh, truck categories uh, that you have uh, called uh, as uh, with, with uh, uh, small caps letter ABC. A certain number uh, of, of uh, those uh, instances of trucks over uh, uh, pretty large, uh, usually a period of time that is, uh, for the case of the surveys, months. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, you just need to do the math and, and uh, uh, compute this, this audio matrix. So how do you get this information? Again, uh, for the origin, uh, typically, uh, if you, we look back at the region that we're studying, uh, the trucks are coming mostly from uh, the port where they, they load the cargo uh, and they take it to warehouses and those could be the, the destinations uh, A and B. So the, what, what is the, how oh, this picture changes if we consider the sensors? Uh, so again, uh, the, the numbers, the counts that we can uh, rely on uh, are now with, uh, associated with a timestamp that is here shown with T. Uh, and we have a count for the, uh, for the class uh, of, uh, of truck that we're observing uh, uh, that is linked uh, at the time where we do the observation. Uh, so each sensor gives you a number of observation, uh, and then the game really is about trying to relate those uh, in a way that makes sense uh, in order to estimate uh, the, this uh, audio matrix. So what information can you use uh, to do that? Uh, well, we went back to the traffic information because that allows you uh, to compute what is called the travel time, uh, meaning that if you have, say, the truck uh, that is labeled A uh, that is seen at the sensor one, uh, if you can tell, you can predict uh, based on, on the travel time that is uh, dependent on the traffic uh, and therefore the time of the day, 
uh, how long it's going to take him to go to sensor two or sensor three, then you can try to reconcile the observations that you see at those sensors uh, and uh, eventually be able to track uh, the trucks along the way. Uh, now, obviously, the, this is a simplified version. Uh, so the real system of using is to scale uh, so that you can have multiple regions uh, and uh, uh, multiple uh, tracks, multiple sensors, uh, and, and be able to uh, compute for each segment uh, really what is the volume of drugs that goes by. Uh, th there are other challenges that are related to uh, uh, for first the fact that uh, the sensors are, are not perfect. Uh, so you may not know exactly what class uh, it is, so that there is uh, uh, some uncertainty in terms of the sensor telling you uh, what is the class of drug that is being seen. Uh, so think about uh, the uh, uh, CCTV cameras. Uh, if you have uh, the, the video stream, you, you need to detect the truck in the video and classify it. Uh, and, and sometimes you, you make errors. So the, there is um, an uncertainty that is related to, to the class estimation. Uh, the second part has to do, uh, the second certainty that we need to deal with uh, has to do with the fact that traffic uh, it is uh, the, the it is variable the the trucks uh, so so what we have is, is a, a, an average uh, estimation of the traffic along a segment uh, and the truck might go a little bit faster or a, a little bit slower depending on which lane it is traveling uh, and and uh, the 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 traffic condition really uh, so. The, there is an uncertainty in terms of uh, how long it's going to take uh, for the truck to actually go from sensor to sensor. Uh, and so that we model uh, as uh, a, a spread of the uh, uh, probability that, uh, that the truck arrives at a certain time uh, at, the, at uh, uh, a certain location uh, for, for, the, for the estimation of the, of the travel uh, time. Uh, so, so we have approach, uh, uh, created three different approaches to try to uh, uh, validate uh, these, uh, these ideas. So uh, I will just give you the name and uh, uh, show you that on the results because uh, it, it's easier to understand what they are uh, looking at pictures than uh, to uh, stare at text and be explaining. Uh, so the, the, there is a baseline approach, uh, then what we call a rule flow and a rich flow uh, uh, approaches. So I'll, I'll tell you that uh, in, in a moment. Uh, so uh, the, initially we thought about uh, validating the system with real data. Uh, however, with the COVID-19 pandemic that has been uh, uh, shown difficult to, uh, in the first place, to get the data. Uh, so, so we had secured, uh, uh, we had talked to uh, Caltrans and secured access to uh, some of the data, for instance, uh, CCTV cameras. Uh, however, with the pandemic, uh, first the, the traffic flow was changed and uh, uh, then it was difficult to go in, uh, and get the data. Uh, so we, we changed a little bit uh, of, uh, uh, of course, uh, for the research, uh, uh, also because uh, uh, even though we, we could get data uh, in the region, uh, it's unclear uh, how we actually would use it to validate, because to do a validation, you would need to have some type of ground truth. And... Uh, 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 and that, that, that's, uh, that's hard to, to be able to get your hands on. Uh, one way that would be possible is uh, to have uh, the trucks outfitted with GPS, which uh, systems that, uh, that would track them uh, along uh, the travel. Uh, however, the, the companies that uh, manage the trucks don't want to release the type of data, even though they're using uh, GPS tracking. Uh, on their truck uh, routinely, uh, if I understand well. 
so what we did is that uh, instead of trying to go from real world data, uh, uh, we, we decided to go from, uh, for the validation, uh, start uh, from uh, synthetic data. Uh, so what we did is build a, a truck simulator uh, that I can show here. Uh, that basically ingests information about the road network. So the, that's the actual road network that you can see in a map. Uh, sensors uh, that we synthesize uh, and a truck fleet uh, that has certain conditions that you can set, such as where do they start, at what time, uh, and what, where, where do they get, uh, what are the, their destinations. Uh, and we inject uh, something that is uh, real world, uh, that is the, the traffic information from the system that we manage at MSC uh, for doing the, the, the truck uh, uh, pass estimation uh, that I mentioned earlier. So the output is uh, of the simulator is basically the simulated truck uh, fleet uh, observations. So at each sensor, we would tell that a given truck is getting there uh, uh, for a certain, uh, we, we would know the, the class of, of the truck and the time. Uh, the simulated uh, trajectories uh, of, of the trucks on the road network, uh, and the, the output for the simulated uh, all the matrices and volume along uh, the, the uh, road segments uh, that we're uh, monitoring. Uh, so this information is, is basically becoming our ground truth. Uh, and so the uh, modeling that we do is going to eventually uh, uh, take in the observations and the real world traffic. Uh, because the idea here is, is not to do build a system that is real time, but to build a system that works on historical data, meaning data that have been collected already, uh, and uh, produce the, uh, the OD matrices and the estimated volume on links that you can then compare with the ground truth for validation. Uh, so here you see the results. Uh, so there, there, there are a couple of slides uh, and I'll go about the main points. Uh, this one is showing the, the uh, precision and recall for the segments that have been uh, uh, reconstructed. So the ground truth is the, what uh, was simulated. Uh, so those are all the segments where the, the, the virtual truck fleet is uh, traveling. The baseline, as you can see, uh, has only a few dots. Uh, and that's because the baseline, we consider that uh, it only uh, accounts for the truck observation at the sensor location. So each, each blue dot there in the second column that is the baseline, is showing you where we have uh, generated synthesized uh, the synthetic sensors. Luciano? Yes? Is recall the amount of the network that is identified? Uh, correct. Okay. Yes. Yes, here we, we don't look at if uh, the, <clears throat> the, the, if the, the count that we get on the link is correct or not. We, we just uh, say that we, we were able to to uh, compute account for the, for that link. Okay, so root, root flow is this one. Uh, so here what we're doing is, is that we're trying to extend uh, the, the predictions uh, from the sensors, uh, but we're stopping as soon as we get to uh, some intersection where we have a fork in the road and, and we don't really uh, know which, which way to extend it. Uh, so as you, as you can see, we, we get a little bit more of the links uh, that, that are uh, reconstructed, uh, but the recall is still very low. Uh, and this, this is uh, the, the, uh, the flow uh, approach. Uh, and in this one, we do something uh, that is a, a little bit uh, uh, similar to, to well, it's, it's exactly uh, 
uh, what I've shown you, where we, we try to relate the observation between sensors to uh, predict which, which truck is going where. Uh, and that allows us to, to go around the fork uh, in the roadway system. Uh, and we get a, a much more complete picture than that we had in the uh, left side. Now you see that the top row is, is 50 sensors, the bottom is 150, uh, and there is quite a bit of difference. Uh, the, yeah, I cannot point with the, with the mouse, but uh, it is not complete for the uh, reason that uh, there are some places where uh, the, there are very few sensors. Uh, and uh, we need to make a decision when the, when uh, uh, the, the trucks go one direction or another at the fork, uh, and and we're applying a greedy approach to do that. Uh, so in order to get a picture that would be more similar to this one, uh, either you add more sensors uh, randomly as we did here, or you add more sensors uh, in a strategic way. Uh, so that you actually uh, optimize the number of sensors uh, and maximize the number of things that are reconstructed. Uh, th these are the results that uh, show you uh, the, the quality of the models. Uh, and here, the first thing that uh, uh, is visible is that if you put enough uh, sensors, uh, then you, you get pretty good accuracy that uh, is, is stable. So the green line is the flow approach. Uh, and uh, as you can see, that gives uh, some of the best uh, results uh, in, in terms of uh, precision and accuracy. Uh, accuracy and recall, sorry. Uh, the, the red... Uh, the red is the ground truth, so obviously it's, it's all the way at, uh, uh, at the top, uh, at 100% in, in all the graphics. So, so here we see uh, that, that uh, uh, but we saw it uh, that simi similar to the links that the number of links that are reconstructed. Here the recall uh, in terms of, uh, here we're looking at the accuracy of the counts. Uh, and, and recall for the counts uh, on, on the segments uh, is also highest with the flow uh, approach. And, and uh, similarly, obviously, the, the mean absolute error and the percent of percentage to mean absolute error are also the, the lowest, consequently. Can you, yeah, can you explain? I'm, I'm speaking for the social scientists here. Uh, can you explain how um, the error rate continues to go down as you increase sensors, but the precision stays pretty much the same once we get to 150? Uh, I, I think that it, 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 it's related to the fact uh, that uh, if you... So here we, we, we're just doing uh, the, yeah, I'm, it's not related to that. Uh, we're we're uh, distributing the sensors randomly. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so, so the distribution of the sensor is not optimized to the road network. And therefore, it's hard to, to go around that. So you, you get better up to a certain point, and then you don't have the information to, to, to continue right. growing that. But I don't know why the error keeps coming down. Uh, the error keeps coming down. Uh, so the recall well, uh, goes up. That's good. Uh, the error goes down. So the top is increasing the number of sensors. The bottom is increasing the number of trucks. So the, the more the more sensors, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Chris uh, can give us a, a, a better idea of that. But, uh, I, I, think, I think it has to do with assumption that is making on, on the on the on the simulation. And I know that one of them is that uh, the sensors are perfect in this case. 
And then we have also one origin and uh, I don't know how many destinations, but uh, at least then. These results, we, we just uh, I just shown them to you because they're useful to us in terms of understanding how the model performs. Uh, and if it's feasible to actually uh, uh, instrument the roadways in, in such a way that uh, you you get this this uh, this system to provide you uh, with with track information. Uh, now, when it comes to uh, a decision maker, uh, what uh, is interesting for the decision maker is to know where the it, it is best to place the sensors, uh, how many sensors to place in one area, depending on the accuracy of the output that is uh, needed. And so for that, we built a, a dashboard uh, that uh, allows us to uh, load different simulations with different parameters. Uh, and that uh, allows us to compare uh, approaches uh, and the, the, the results. Um, um, yeah, so, so, so that the decision can be made. Uh, now I'm shifting gears here and going back to uh, the sensor level where we're asking the questions about the CCTV cameras and if they're useful in terms of uh, helping us count uh, trucks uh, that, that uh, are on the highway system. Uh, so this uh, uh, videos, uh, frames here, we have uh, uh, extracted from publicly available uh, web cameras that are uh, in our website uh, that uh, Caltrans uh, has. Uh, and they're not in the region uh, of uh, in, in trust. Uh, however, they are the typical uh, type of cameras that uh, Caltrans uses for monitoring the roadways. And so the first thing that we did, obviously, is to look uh, at, uh, at uh, some of the footage to try to understand what uh, challenges there are. Uh, the first one uh, being that there is quite a bit of work that has been done on uh, tracking vehicles uh, on, uh, on video. Uh, uh, and uh, obviously for autonomous vehicles, this is becoming something that uh, is uh, now quite important to do. So here the perspective is a little bit different, but uh, there is work that has been done in this area. However, uh, it seems that no one has really uh, done work in trying to uh, understand specifically for truck, uh, for freight, what, uh, what uh, what you can detect and with what accuracy. Um, so the, there are the, the usual problems that you have with, with uh, uh, imagery and video processing, that is the size of the objects that are seen, whether they're uh, too close or they're too far. Sometimes they, they're uh, uh, not part of the frame completely. Uh, and for that, there are approaches that are used. Uh, so you, you try to select the best image in the, in the video footage uh, for doing uh, the classification and so on. And so ob obviously we looked at uh, uh, the state of the art and, and we, we went from there. Uh, so the state of the art is, is you, that we have implemented this year, what is called the YOLO uh, algorithm. Uh, and the idea is that we, uh, again, do some simplifying assumptions uh, because this is the first time that, that, that we're uh, working on this. So uh, on this problem, so we, we're not trying to uh, go and, and directly classify videos. We just start with images. If we can do that uh, with the accuracy that is needed, then we'll, we'll uh, move on the videos. Uh, that basically is the same type of processing, but uh, it, uh, uh, it it just uh, resolves uh, uh, problems uh, that occur when, when the vehicle is not completely in the image frame. So here we're selecting the vehicles uh, by end. Uh, and so we do this of these uh, videos that we uh, have obtained from uh, the, the webcam footage that is uh, uh, available online. 
uh, and we had to go obviously and, and label uh, the the videos for for the trucks in order to train uh, the classifier that uh, uh, give uh, that detects and classifies the uh, the trucks that are seen. Uh, now, again, one of the first step is really to try to understand uh, what classes are useful. Uh, so if you think in terms of uh, the um, federal administration, uh, highway administration, they, what they use is, is the, this axle-based really uh, classification uh, for, for the vehicles. Uh, and that's a little bit problematic with images because uh, normally you don't see the axles uh, in images. Uh, the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the work that has been done already uh, does not consider uh, the, the trucks. Uh, they just uh, uh, differentiate between uh, uh, vehicles uh, uh, and uh, uh, cars and, 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 uh, and uh, any other. Uh, vehicle, but they, they don't specifically uh, give you a, a fine grain uh, uh, classification. So, so we wouldn't choose that for labeling. So we, we, we built a three tier uh, uh, system here to try to uh, classify the trucks that we have interest in uh, initially. Uh, and here you see the mapping to uh, the Federal Highway Administration table. Uh, where basically you have a small, medium, and heavy. Uh, eventually, we found out uh, through experimentation that uh, that was not good enough uh, because some of these classes visually uh, are uh, going to appear uh, very much the same in the videos. Uh, so, so we had two subclasses. So we divided here the uh, small trucks into vans and pickups. And then we have the heavy duty that are single unit or uh, articulated. Uh, so th these are some of the results. Uh, I, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go much through it, but uh, they, they showed you typically how you uh, classify uh, the, and, and what is the output. So here you can see that uh, the boxes correspond to the classes. Uh, and uh, in most of the cases here, we're getting it right. There are some uh, cases that uh, are not uh, as expected. Uh, for so rather than to, we do look at the at those, at those picture for the old cases. But uh, normally, what we look is uh, is at uh, the performance metrics for the for the model uh, and. Uh, what we did is obviously uh, that uh, as we uh, uh, upgraded the, the number of, uh, of classes that we're considering, uh, we built different data sets. So here you see uh, the data set that is labeled as V2, version two and uh, the version three. Uh, and here the, the work that we did is uh, go from the uh, small, single, and uh, articulated single and lightweight to articulated single unit, van, and pickup. And so you see that uh, if we just look at um, uh, the average precision there, it's uh, the numbers are pretty good for the, for the large trucks, but the lightweights are, are pretty low. So that's why we decided to split, uh, which, uh, Gave us pretty good numbers, you see, for the pickups, but the vans are, are pretty bad. Uh, that's 50%, uh, so it is just luck. Uh, and the reason is that we don't have enough samples uh, labeled for, for vans. Uh, so we uh, went on. Uh, another problem that we found uh, by looking uh, at the picture is that uh, a lot of time we were uh, not able to classify correctly because uh, the uh, camera is placed on one side of the highway and you see vehicles that are traveling in both directions. So sometimes you see them from the front, sometimes you see them from the back. Uh, and that introduces uh, 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 problems for the model that is not able to recognize those. So we, we added subclasses for uh, each one of the version three 
uh, for front and rear. And you see that the numbers there are getting slowly better. Uh, still for the van, we're, we're low because we, we don't have enough that we need to label and we're, we're working on that. One output is, is obviously the, of this research is the data sets that we're going to share with the community. Uh, and here you see the, the uh, statistics for, for each one of the version two to four. Uh, so, so, the few, so we're continuing to work on this uh, as we speak. And uh, as I mentioned, the, the, we, we want for, first to um, uh, finalize uh, the, the data set so that we, can, we are able to detect all the classes of interest. Uh, and then uh, we want to uh, extend the processing of the single frames to video uh, because there we uh, would be able to select the best frames for seeing each one of the vehicle, which will increase uh, the precision uh, of uh, the, the, the results. And, and obviously, uh, all, all this we want, to, we want to publish because we didn't have time to do it uh, up until now, you don't have a thank you slide at the end, but uh, thank you. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I did have a question. So I was curious whether, um, like, so I, I know that you use computer vision and kind of like simulating the entire uh, tracking network, but I was curious if you ever considered using like uh, like GPS data or like, I know like recently they came out with like this, uh, like this product called Streetlight Data where they're tracking like, where they're tracking trucks via GPS. Did you guys ever like consider adding that data to um, the like simulation or like to like the validation methods? So the, the system here is kind of agnostic to the sensors. Uh, as you can see in the picture here, we're just saying we, we have some sensors. Uh, we consider that they produce a timestamp and a class. Uh, and uh, there, is, there is some uncertainty that is attached to that. So we can add to, uh, uh, to, to that information, but that's basically it. Uh, and, and so, in in terms of extending the sensor, the, the system to use different sensors that that is uh, already uh, included. Uh, now, for the particular ones that you're talking, the the GPS, uh, we, we've been trying with Professor Giuliano to uh, to try to get our hands on uh, on some GPS data, uh, but the companies all hold on to that data uh, because they're. they're there, there is the business intelligence in there that they don't want to disclose. Uh, and uh, in order to, to uh, have uh, you know, that information be either useful for driving the system or for uh, uh, as a ground truth, you, you need to have a fair amount of it. Uh, which which means that uh, you would need to get all the companies to buy in. We have a question from the virtual audience from Professor Anastasios Chasiakos. He asks, you mentioned that the Caltrans webcam data are publicly available. Did you encounter any serious restrictions to access the webcam data, for example, perhaps on the basis of privacy considerations? Uh, so, so the the video footage is available through uh, a website that Caltrans has. Uh, and so, what what we did is uh, is is uh, uh, yeah, what, what any high schooler would do is uh, the, you just go and and uh, screen grab the <laughs> the videos, right? Uh, so the here, here we uh, I don't know what what. Uh, uh, privacy uh, concerns. Uh, maybe we, we can uh, we, we can we can ask, but uh, uh, yeah. So the, the, those are, are publicly available. Uh, and and uh, yeah. Uh, from virtual audience member Linda Bidey. So your current she notes your current study area didn't happen to include access to rail yards in commerce. Might that be considered in the future? Uh, so the the surveys do that, uh, and, and that's what is used for uh, uh, estimating the all the matrices matrices today. Uh, we we we're focusing on the sensors. Uh, so if there is sensing that is available at, at those location, uh, 
uh, we would be more than glad to use it. Uh, if we think of the uh, of the ports, we, we know that they have RFID there. So that, that's the type of information that we would be able to leverage, yes. I have a question from Chao Wei at US uh, Caltrans. Um, any plan to compare with the SCAG truck model results? Oh. Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, <laughs> Do you want to answer it? Uh, you were going for it, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the, where we are now, with simulated data being the ground truth, it would not be terribly useful. Um, however, when we get to a point of estimating on ground truth data, that's when it would be useful to compare to the SCAG model. Is it the first part again? Um, because what we're doing here is using a simulated data set, right, right. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with reality. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I would think that if we want to compare the SCAG truck model, what we'd like to do is compare it to reality. Right. One more question. Yeah, I just had a, I was just curious. So like this, this data seems really useful, but I'm, I'm curious, like when we're like kind of like using this data in like other purposes, such as like calculating the impact of pollution, uh, given like the increase in like electric vehicles or electrification of trucks, like do you, do you have like a plan or like do you have like an idea of like how you would incorporate that in uh, to like the, like to just the truck volume data and like calculate the pollution levels based on like the changing, the evolving nature of electrification of truck fleets. So I, I didn't work on that part, but we have someone uh, at uh, IMSC that did some work uh, on uh, uh, modeling the pollution that uh, is driven by the highways. Uh, so you, you probably you you heard that if you you live close to the highway, then your your risks are are, are increased. Uh, so, and that's the idea to, to, to use this information because the, uh, all the sensors that are, are um, sensing pollution, uh, they're designed to capture the background pollution. So they're, they're farther away from any source. And so it, you really don't understand what is happening, uh, where, where the, the pollution is created. Uh, so, yeah, definitely both, both, the, both the simulation, if, if we uh, get uh, real, real data, obviously, that has a, a good application, but uh, even though the, uh, just, just the simulation, I think, would be uh, useful in that respect for, for planning. Yes, and what we do now, essentially, is um, we, we create an OD matrix as best we can. Uh, and then we feed that data into an emissions model. And that's how we get emissions estimates from the traffic. Maybe I'm a bit far-fetched, but um, how do you think your model would stand in areas where we can't assume that the vehicle coming is obviously from the port? Like if there's, you know how sometimes people use vehicles that may seem like delivery vans, but they're just using it to transport a, like, a group home or something like that. How do you think your study would stand in different conditions? I guess. So the, 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 that's a good question. So so we're not. Uh, so so the, the problem here is is scaling. So we're looking at a finite region. So we have a, a number of uh, origins and number of destinations. It's finite. So how do you move this to larger areas? Uh, so as long as you have the sensors. And you can define what are those uh, origin and destinations. Then uh, the, the only question is if the sensors are enough so that you can resolve the different ways in which the trucks are, are going from to two. So for the purpose of the algorithm, we're, we're, we're trying to track uh, the trucks uh, between sensors. But we don't really know if it's if it's really uh, this truck or that truck. We just say, okay, th this observation is compatible with this other observation because it's the same type of truck, and based on travel time, it it, it looks like this truck could be seen here, and that's what we see. So we 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 associate it in this way, uh, and the. the 
Yeah, so, so, so the, the, that's why also it's not a real time system. We're not trying to do uh, to track vehicles in real time. We're just trying to estimate the volume over some time period. So the results that I think I showed are, are one hour time slots.